Hello, I'm Claudia Macias Silverman, Director of Admissions. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Coyne College. Whether you're here for a new career or for a change in career, we are excited to be training with you. Now, what is this all about, orientation? Orientation is set up to prepare you for your first day of class or first evening of class. Now, depending on what track you're following, Allied Health versus Construction Trade, you will be either starting online or on campus. If you are following our Allied Health track, you will be starting online. If you are starting with our Construction Trade track, you will be on ground. Therefore, we will be seeing you then. If you have any questions, please reach out to your admissions representative before starting your class. Then that way we could address any concerns you may have. Otherwise, please make sure that you finish this mandatory orientation. It'll give you details as to what to expect. It'll also give you some direction as to who can help you with what. Either way, we're so excited to be having you here. Welcome to COIN. My name is Jenny Gonzalez and I am the Director of Career Services here at COINT. Um, I do have three different career services representatives who will be working you through all your time here and even post-graduation. So Ms. Sandra Schwartz, she is the Electrical Career Services representative. She'll be working with all the electrical students and graduates. Mr. Kenio Johnson, he's the HVAC Career Services rep. Ms. Septup Gulder, She's the Alley Health Extension Coordinator and also the Career Services Representative for all the students and graduates of the Alley Health programs. As you can see, all the phone numbers, Google Voice text number, and email address have been listed. If you have any questions or concerns before you can actually meet with your representative, feel free to reach out to them via phone, text, or email address. So where are we located at Coin College? Um, actually, it is by the reception area, right behind the reception area, where you can actually find the office of the career services representative. My office is by the administrative wing. As of right now, we are not at the location. We are working from home, and you'll have access to our services as well. You can actually reach out during these hours, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 8 to 7 p.m. On Wednesday, we are open from 8 to 5 p.m. And Friday, we are open 9 to 3 p.m. Fridays, we don't have any classes, any students. Uh, typically, you go to school Monday to Thursday, and nice students go to class Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So Friday is a very good day for you to meet with your career services representative, either in person when we're able to, otherwise it will go through a Zoom meeting or maybe a phone call. So what can we do to assist you? Um, career services, we help all the students and the graduates with all aspects of the career search. We do revise your resume. We cannot write it for you. We wanna make sure that you have the skills in actually revising and creating a resume. We provide employment listings for career opportunities or part-time opportunities. So you'll be working with your career services representative from the first class all the way until graduation and even past graduation until you've successfully found employment in the field of study. We host two career fairs a year for the construction trade, so for HVAC and electrical. One is in the spring, the other one is in the fall. The reason why the Alley Health does not have an actual career fair is because all the Alley Health students have to go through an externship and for the most part they end up getting employment opportunities through the externship experience. You will see your representative throughout the whole time you're here in the classroom. They will actually be administering workshops on different career search topics such as resume writing, covered letters, mock interviews, job search, you'll have the opportunity as well to meet with one of us for about a 30 minute mock interview at the end of your journey here or in the beginning, depending on what program you're taking. We cultivate relationship with employers. Um, we do have over hundreds of 
employers work with us and we are always building more partnerships to give more opportunities to our students and graduates. Career Services is also involved in the graduation process, which is very exciting. My two favorite days are orientation and graduation, where I get to see you uh, in the first day of your journey here. And then when you're actually crossing the stage in a lot of the times, some of you might be working already in the field. Placement is not guaranteed. Um, we wanna make sure that you understand that this is a partnership and we actually meet you halfway. Opportunities are out there. We just have to make sure that we actually get them. Career services is a lifelong service. So once you've graduated from Queen College, you can always come back to career services for assistance in resume writing, cover letters, or even for employment opportunities. Why do we do what we do? Because we care. We're very passionate. We believe in our students. We believe in you and we believe in your future. Any habits that you create today will pay up tomorrow. My advice will be make sure that you pay attention to your attendance, make sure that you are paying attention to your grades. Those are very important when you're actually going through school. Finding a job is a full-time job itself. We make that journey easier by providing opportunities and by coaching you throughout your journey. If you have questions about placement rates, you can actually go to the website at coincollege.edu backslash disclosures, and you can actually find all the placement rates for the different programs that we offer at Coin. And I would like to leave you with uh, this last uh, sentence, a positive attitude will take you a long way. So our feedback from our employers have taught us that um, a lot of the employers are looking for people that have taken initiative, people that have strong work ethic, people that are willing to go far and beyond um, their actual job duties. So always make sure that you're trying your best. And we are on Facebook. So if you would like to check out our website on Facebook, um, in like us on Facebook, we do have our page as well as Queen College. Welcome to the family and we look forward to working with you and seeing you in the near future at COIN. Welcome to COIN College. My name is Ashley Tuckton and I am the Director of Financial Aid. Today I will be giving you information on our student accounts and financial aid departments such as what we do and how to reach us. I will begin with the student accounts department. The first thing to notice is the location of the student accounts department. Many of you have not been to the campus, but as soon as we get back, you'll see that this office is conveniently located outside of the administrative wing. Next are the hours for the student accounts department. Please pay close attention to these hours. These are the times that you'll be able to make payments and purchase items. One thing to note is that they open at 7.45 a.m. So if you need to make a payment or buy a t-shirt or other supplies, you can stop by before class. Other options would be to stop by on break or after class. They're even here on Fridays if you need to stop in. What we do. The student accounts department is responsible for taking in tuition payments. So if we have a monthly payment plan due to COIN, you can pay in person here once we're back on campus, of course. You can also buy COIN t-shirts, hoodies, and other school supplies such as notebooks and pens. We accept cash, credit cards, checks, and money orders to make these payments. To make payments online, which will be the best option in the meantime while you're attending online, would be to go to www.coincollege.edu and scroll to the bottom of the page for the student portal to make your monthly payment. You will be receiving login information for the student portal shortly if you haven't received it already. This department also maintains records of all charges and payments. What this means is that any tuition charge as well as any payments you make will be maintained in our system. You will also have access to view this on your student portal. The next bullet states that student accounts will post any financial aid grants and loans that come to your account. Again, you'll be able to see this on your student portal or you can even ask for a copy of your student ledger card. This will show any charges, and payments made to your account. We in student accounts set up monthly payment plans and mail them to any student with a payment plan. These monthly payment amounts can also be 
seen on the award letter you reviewed with the financial aid department. Lastly, if you fail or withdraw from a class, you also will need to see the student accounts department because this may affect your payment plan or tuition charges. We also answer any questions you have regarding any payment plans, charges, fees, and balances. So please feel free to stop by at any time to ask your question. The new normal for now. As we know, these are unprecedented times, so the information on this slide was created specifically as a result of the changes to moving online for now. However, even when we're back on campus, you're more than welcome to call or stop by the Student Accounts Department to ask questions or make payments, anything you need regarding your payment plan, please ask. So again, as I stated, your first option is going to be to use the student portal to make any monthly payments owed to coins. Another option would be to email your credit card information to um, our student accounts department. As you can see, we would need the account number, type, expiration date, and the code on the back. The last option, you can definitely call or leave a message to make payments or even ask questions to the numbers below. Please jot down this information. As I said, it can be used to make payments or ask questions. The email addresses and phone numbers are from Mr. Robertson and Ms. Drabeck in student accounts. However, just to reiterate, your first and best option in these times of staying at home is if you have monthly payments to use the student portal with a credit card. But again, feel free to contact us via email or phone and we'll get back to you. We're not available. Moving on to the financial aid department. We are located in the administrative wing, which you will see when you return to campus. We're welcome to stop by before class, on breaks, after class, or even on Fridays. Please see the hours listed. The clipboard resides outside the door, so when you need to speak to a financial aid advisor, please sign your name so we know you're waiting. And again, please note that we are here prior to you starting class at 8 a.m. So if you do have a quick question or need to drop off a paper, feel free to stop by at 7.30 on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Before class, you can always stop by again on your break or after class. What does financial aid do? Many of you have been in contact with financial aid via email and or phone call, so you know a little bit about what we do, which is assisting students with the FAFSA, as we know it can be a confusing process. So any questions pertaining to how to fill out the FAFSA, why do you need to fill out the FAFSA, what information needs to go on the FAFSA, please again feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to answer those questions. Once the FAFSA is complete, we then send out award letters. An award letter is your financial plan for you at Coin College. It states the cost of the program you're in, if and how much grant money you qualify for, if and how much loan money you qualify for, as well as if you have an out-of-pocket payment and how much that would cost you monthly. So again, the first step is complete the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. Once that's done, you will receive an award letter from us. The next point, which is starred immensely, if you didn't receive an award letter or don't understand it, please contact someone in the financial aid department. This is very important because we really want you to understand how much you're paying for the school, how much loans you're borrowing, how much your monthly payment is, and things like that. So if you don't understand it, please let us know. We want to make sure you understand your financial aid at COIN. If we have to explain it 10 times, that's okay. We understand it's a confusing process and we don't mind answering questions. The next bullet states that all student loan borrowers are required to complete what's called a master promissory note and loan counseling course. This is a requirement by the U.S. Department of Education, again, for all student loan borrowers. If you have not completed it, please complete by Monday, May 11th. The link is here, www.studentaid.gov. The master promissory note is your loan agreement. This is your contract with the government saying you do want the loans and you promise to pay them back. 
Loan counseling is an online course about loans. It's to make sure you understand what loans are and that you're being a responsible borrower. It's not graded or timed. However, you do have to answer the check your knowledge questions. And again, if you have questions about this, please feel free to reach out to the financial aid department. I will be listing our contact information on the next slide. Lastly, about two weeks prior to all construction trade students finishing, we will pull you into a room to discuss how to pay, who to pay, how much to pay on your student loans. We'll give you tips on how to save money and all the information you need to successfully repay your student loans. So if you do have questions, feel free to ask now, but just know that in the future, prior to finishing the program, we will give you this information. All of our allied health students are also going to take an exit counseling course. You will actually come in one-on-one -on -one after your externship is completed and go over all this information with the financial aid department. The new normal for now. Again, the new normal, as we're all living it with the stay at home order, many things are being done from home electronically. So please feel free to reach out to via email to financial aid at coincollege.edu or call myself, Ashley Tuckton, or Ms. Amelia King. Our numbers are listed on the slide. DocuSign. This is a way to sign documents electronically. It's something that is important because with us all staying home, we are more glued to our computers and phones to get things done. So please check your emails regularly so you can sign documents from, like I said, your phone or your computer. Check your emails regularly. We may need you to sign something such as an award letter or another important document. Additionally, once we're back on campus, we may need to see you in person. The way we do this is that we request you from your class if additional documents are needed. So you might have your instructor inform you, hey, you need to go see financial aid. Don't worry, it's nothing you did wrong. Sometimes we just need to see you. We might have a question or need something additional, signature or document. So please come by when requested or on your own if you ever have a question. Again, we are more than happy to help. Our main goal at Coin College in financial aid is to make sure that you understand your loans and your grants and your whole financial aid package. So again, Please stop by if you have any questions and welcome to COIN. Greetings. This is, I'm Virginia Hansen and I'm the Director of Education here at COIN College. I wanted to talk to you about two departments within our organization. I have with me today, Diane Bartholomew, who is our librarian in our Resource Center. Uh, Diana, you wanna talk about our Resource Center? Sure. Hello everyone, my name is Diana Bartholomew, librarian at the Resource Center. What I wanted to do is talk a little bit about the Resource Center and explain all the different resources we have available to you as current COIN students, both in print and in digital. So I'm going to go ahead and share a PowerPoint presentation that I have for you, just giving a little bit of information about it. We're going to go ahead and have it load. There we go. Um, once again, I'm the librarian of the Resource Center. Our Resource Center is open uh, Monday through Friday. So once you're able to access the building, you'll be able to access it through the main entrance. Our hours are posted on the window as well as um, within the Resource Center. We're open Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Wednesdays 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and on Fridays from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So even though we do not have classes on Fridays, you are still able to come in and utilize the Resource Center, whether, whether you just need a quiet place to study, somewhere to come in and do your homework, upload a resume, finish your research paper, you're more than welcome to come in. I can also be reached uh, via my email address, which I have here, dbartholomew at coincollege.edu. I can also be reached via our Resource Center's webpage. Our webpage address is coincollegerc.com. 
Once we get into the Resource Center, you'll be able to take a look at our physical collection. We have over 60 periodicals, different magazines. Most of them are all technical in nature. We have over 3,000 books in our collection, and you as a current COIN student have borrowing privileges. So you can check out three books at a time for up to a week. And of course, if you need them longer, just bring them back. We'll renew them over and over. We also have study tables. So should you need a quiet place to study or finish your homework before class or after class, meet with some friends, maybe you have to go to work later and you just need some place to, to hang out and finish your uh, homework, you're more than welcome to study around inside the resource center. We also have computers. We do have PCs in our resource center. They all have internet access, Microsoft products. We do offer printing, uh, which is free. We do have a 10 page limit per person per day. But of course, if it's something you need for school or for work of importance, just let us know. We'll be able to help you print out the rest of the copies. Because these are public computers, make sure you save your documents. If you don't know how to upload to your Google Drive or save on a flash, we'll be more than happy to sit down and show you how to do that, which leads us to our assistance and troubleshooting we also offer. So say you do need additional help, downloading, emailing, printing, how do I format my research paper? I need to create a resume. How do I make it look pretty? I need to find information for my research paper. How do I do that? We'll be more than happy to help you and sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and show you how to do all that. We also offer digital resources for our resource center. Our two digital main resources are going to be the resource center's website, which has helpful links and information resources, and then learn. Learn is a special database that we here at Coin College subscribe to so that you have access to online medical journals, magazines, newspapers, ebooks, everything you're going to need to have an academic resource for all of your research papers. We're gonna go through the uh, website really quickly. I just wanna highlight a couple pages we have so you get a kind of idea of what we have included on there. We do have a page devoted to computer skills for student success. So if you feel like you need a little extra computer help, this page is really helpful. It has tutorials, everything from a beginner's guide to computers, to how to upload documents, how to download documents, to actual tutorials to teach you how to use Microsoft products like like PowerPoint and uh, Microsoft Word and Excel. We do have another page devoted to Google Classroom, which you'll be using for all your online classes. So if you need some help, you know, figuring out how do I access Google Classroom? How do I upload photos to submit it for my assignments? What's the difference if I use my iPhone versus my Android? Am I going to have issues? How do I go about and upload everything? Um, this page is really helpful giving you a tip tips and tricks so that you can go ahead and uh, utilize them for your Google Classroom assignments. We also have a page devoted to COVID-19 resources. So say you're looking for up-to-date information about what's going on, you know, what's open, what's closed. I need healthcare information, emergency childcare information, financial resources, housing assistance, even food assistance. We have links on here that are applicable towards people living in the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago. So you could feel free to go through the page. I constantly update it with new and current information. Our Resource Center webpage also has program specific pages. So depending on what program you're enrolled in, each program has its own page that contains helpful links to websites and resources online. All the information is free, quizzes, practice tests, links to ebooks, and there's just a ton of information available on there. We also offer scholarship information, student resources, say you're in between housing, you need helpful information about free or low cost general health care, transportation information. We have uh, links on there for you. Uh, job search resources, green energy, green technology resources, certification information. All of these are listed on the website and are updated. 
Our second resource, other than the Resource Center's webpage, is LEARN. As I mentioned before, LEARN is a separate database. It's a separate website where you have access to thousands of academic resources, including medical journals, magazines, newspapers. They're all full text, so you're going to get the full, complete article. Many of them are peer-reviewed. Everything's available off campus. And we also have tutorials online that I posted on the Resource Center's webpage. And once we get back into the building if you'd like we can sit down one-on-one -on -one and we can walk you through the system once again you know my name is Diana Bartholomew I'm the librarian at the Resource Center these resources are all available for you it's up to you to come in and ask for assistance and ask for help we'll always be more than welcome to do that thank you thank Virginia you. Uh, Diana, that's a that's, uh, great presentation. I appreciate that. Um, students, you're, once we get back to One North State Street, uh, Diana does a wonderful job in keeping the Resource Center updated. Um, it is the most comfortable room, um, I believe, on the floor. Uh, so students love to study there. Now, what I would like to do right now is to talk about the Education Department. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna uh, share um, our, my presentation on the education department. Okay, so the education department is the organization within COIN which takes care of all the business work behind education, transcripts, uh, attendance, uh, where do I go to get uh, information? Where do I go to get a FERPA form? So that's what I'd like to talk about a little bit today. Um, we are, uh, the education department, again, talks about attendance. You get, for every class, a limited number of emergency days. If you are sick, uh, if someone in your family is sick, it's, it's extremely important for you to be in class every day, from the start of class to the end of class. But we know life requires you sometimes to miss a day where you're not feeling well. So we have a specific amount of days uh, for each class, your instructor will explain that to you on Monday, how many days, emergency days you have for your class. Uh, we take attendance at the beginning of the class, at the middle of the class, at the end of the class. We do that both in person and online. Every minute of your absence is counted. So don't think, oh, I was five minutes late, that's okay. Now, those five minutes come off of your emergency days. Mr. Morris is our operations co coordinator. He monitors attendance. Uh, you must call in every day that you are absent and you need to copy down his phone number. It's 773-577-8071. When we get back to Green Street, we'll also talk about late slips. Uh, Mr. Morris uh, hands those out if you are late. FERPA, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, affords students certain rights with respect to their educational records. You are all adults. Uh, we cannot give out any information to grandma, to your mom, to your dad, to your brother about what grades or what's going on in class unless you sign a FERPA form. Um, this is a federal requirement and you can get this at the registrar's office as well as in the education department. Um, something, some awards that you might be trying to achieve, you need to set those goals. We have a recognition uh, at the beginning of every term where we acknowledge people who've had perfect attendance. No days out, always there on time, never leaves early. Um, those are, you also get a certificate. You want to accumulate those certificates so that you can show your employer, boom, I'm here on time, all the time I was here at Coin. Um, employers tell us that that is the number one uh, requirement uh, that they're looking for in, in, in employees is that they're there on time and that they're ready to work. The Dean's List is another special recognition that we give out every term and this is for students who have achieved a 95% better grade in their class. Uh, we certainly love to give out uh, Dean's List honors at graduation so if you keep up Getting the Dean's List in every course will acknowledge you at graduation. But more importantly, if you're aiming for 95% grade in a class, 
you're learning. You know you have to study. You know you have to be prepared. So that's one side effect of the dean's list. It's important to be on the dean's list, but more importantly is to make sure that you are learning every single day. When we're back at, North, at One North State Street, uh, that's the abbreviation for One North State Street also, um, we will issue you a U-Pass. This provides you with unlimited rides on CTA. Uh, you will also get your student ID. You want to use that student ID because you can get discounts at some stores as well as uh, like Brookfield Zoo, uh, the art museum with your student ID. You will also be issued a locker and uh, a castle card. A castle card is your swipe card to get in the building. Security is very important to us. We want to make sure that only coin students are getting up on the fourth floor. And that's how we regulate it by using the castle card. You've got to bring your castle card every day that you come to class. Finally, enjoy learning. Feel free to stop by the education department, the education office, uh, ask Mr. Morris or Mr. Friedman, who is the president of Coin College, any questions that you might have as you go on our, your journey. I have the email addresses for both Mr. Morris and Mr. Freeman on the screen. You may want to copy those down. And now, uh, Diana, if you could come on back with me here. Uh, we have a secret code word we're putting into this video. Uh, your instructor on Monday is going to give you a quiz and ask you what was the code word for the videos. And the code word is actually three words put together. Well, kind of three words. It is coin, C O Y N E two careers. And Diana, what else is that used for? That is the Wi-Fi password in the building. <laughs> so if you can't remember coin to careers, you can write down on your answer sheet the Wi-Fi password at One North State Street. So there make you sure you write that down and pass that first quiz that you're going to get on Monday. Thank you very much for watching this video. We will be continuing with another group of uh, people talking to you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Virginia Hansen, the Director of Education here at Coyne College. This part of your orientation video, I'm going to be talking about ways to succeed here at Coyne College. On our first slide, uh, we have a statement that going to college is a journey. You are the driver. You're in control of how much you, information you obtain here at Coyne College. You're not just here for the ride. You have to do more than that than just showing up. If you're going to get to your designate, designation, you need to develop your knowledge base, develop your skills and your confidence. By knowledge base, I'm talking about being able to communicate with other people in your profession. You know the terminology, you know the formulas, you know how things should work in your programs. Um, to develop your skills, once we get back at One North State Street, you're gonna be using our labs to actually practice the knowledge that you learned in your lecture classes. And finally, we want to help you develop your confidence so that when you go for that first interview for the job in your profession, that you feel confident, that you know the material, that you have the skills, and you really can do the job. You need to actively participate. Um, this is a picture of my environmental science class uh, where we talk about urban gardening. Uh, the gentleman in uh, the blue jacket with the gray hair is Mr. Wojtek, one of our former instructors. He was very much involved in gardening. And what he did was he created a compost uh, bin in his uh, backyard where he collects um, potato peels, apple cores, um, banana peels. And what you do in the sun in, the, in this bin, it heats up and it decomposes those materials. Uh, you may throw in some worms into that pile, and once it fully decomposes, you have wonderful fertilizer for your yard. So what Mr. Boyteg did for this class was he brought in a bucket of compost, and he had students look at the compost, smell it, 
and actually put their hand in with the worms. That's participation, actually getting into the bucket. Uh, speaking of getting in, we also talked about rain barrels. Uh, when you own your own home, if you want to collect rainwater, you would put these buckets at the end of your downspout. And then what you can do is, is water your garden. Um, once you own a home, you will realize that you get billed for the water. So having a garden requires a lot of watering. Um, so the rain barrels help you collect the rainwater so that you can water your garden for free. But you have to prepare those rain barrels. And here we've got the, the gentleman, uh, you've got to cut holes so that you can put a drain and a spigot in the rain barrel. Um, you can see the gentleman around the rain barrel helping this young man in the middle here um, cut those holes. They're handing him tools and adhesive and helping him hold the spigot in place. And then you have this one young man here looking out the window. Um, he's not into this stuff. Um, again, you're the driver of your journey. You want to make sure that you're all in every day and you are not just looking out the window. You need to set goals. This is the point of the presentation where I ask students, why are you here? What do you hope to accomplish? Um, and after a little while, students will, will share with me that they um, you know, want a better life for themselves, for their families. Um, they want a college diploma or degree um, because their parents always wanted them to go to college. Uh, some people want to buy a great car uh, when they get their job. And most of the times, the students want a career that is stable, secure, and will, will, they can earn a lot of money at. Um, and there's nothing wrong with saying that you want to earn money. So as you go through your journey here, you've got to remember those goals. You have to keep them in mind because as things get tough, you may forget about those goals and you may want to quit. But if you stick to it, you can achieve those goals. You want uh, some of the goals also are graduation. You wear a cap and gown so that your family and friends can see you graduate. It might be a scholarship. Um, our Learning Resource Center helps us collect information about great scholarships that are available to our students. Um, professional certifications. If you're an HVAC student, you want to get your, a, your EPA certification. Um, this young lady is uh, uh, holding proudly her license to be a pharmacy tech, as well as her certification that she passed the test. Um, medical assistants will also be taking a test called the RMA, the Registered Medical Assistant Exam at the end of the program. Um, we also help you get better careers. You heard that through our career services presentation. Um, employers come here to Coin College to meet you. Um, our reputation is so good that most employers want to have the first crack at hiring our graduates. They're coming here to meet you. Um, it is a, a wonderful thing to, to meet those future employers at our career fair. You need to think critically, not just sitting back and listening to a presentation, but asking why. Why are we talking about this? Why are we doing this? Figuring out what's the important issue of the lecture. You wanna make the best use of your time. We are required to give you between one to two hours of homework every night. Let me say that again. We are required to give you one to two hours of homework every night. You need to make the best use of your time. You have to identify those time stealers in your life. Um, is it uh, uh, playing on the phone, participating in uh, uh, Facebook? Um, is it streaming or binging on TV shows? Um, maybe you have to cut some of that out. Um, maybe you're visiting with friends every night and maybe you've got to wait for the weekends to visit with them. Um, you never want to cut back time on your family. Um, get them involved in helping you study. But uh, you want to think about those time st stealers and how you're going to cut them out. Who can help you do some of the things that need to be done so that you have time to study? Um, this is your support group. This is a picture I took at a graduation. Um, and look at all those people standing up, taking pictures. Um, those are our graduates coming down the stairs. Um, they're so proud of you. Get them involved in helping you. 
succeed here, helping you study. You want to maximize your skills, such as note taking and test taking. Uh, a lot of schools really don't talk about these skills, and we want to spend some time on that. This is a picture I took of a young man early in the morning. He was uh, reviewing for a test. You notice that his book is somewhat highlighted, but not completely highlighted. He also has tabs in the book so that he can easily reference different areas of the book. Um, and, and those are the things we're going to be talking about in classes on how to organize that. Um, this is all part of our student success program. You need to know more than how to study, but you need to know how to learn. So if I ask you, what are you doing to study? You have to have answers. Are you reading the textbook? Are you reviewing your notes? Are you creating new notes from the textbook? Are you talking to others about the topics? Are you working with a study group? We have a nine step program in our student success program. Uh, we're not gonna be talking about all nine steps today. Uh, we're gonna start off with organization. Uh, when you get back to One North State Street, we're gonna give you a black binder. And in that binder, uh, we're gonna have uh, these different uh, documents. We're gonna have a table of contents, an assignment log, a daily planner, and daily notes. The, Binder is going to help you organize all of the handouts that you get in class as well as your notes so that you're not just stuffing them in your book bag, that they're in one place organized and neatly uh, kept. Um, this is an example of some of the binders that a couple of my students had. Um, you can see they have a, the middle binder has a handout. To the right we have the course syllabus and up front is the Cornell notes that that student took in the class. Uh, we have three hole punchers in all of the classrooms so that you can punch holes in any activities or materials that you get during a class. In that binder will be a table of contents so you can keep track of all the handouts. So a year from now, you can say, wait a minute, I know that chart is somewhere. You can look at your table of contents and you're going to know what folder that that chart is in. You have an assignment log to keep track of all your assignments, the due dates, and the grades. You'll be able to write what the assignment is. You'll be able to check it off once you hand it in. And then you'll also be able to keep track of your grades. You'll have a weekly planner where you can keep track of all of the assignments that you get, when the tutors are available, and when a test is going to happen. Um, you might say, you know, I've got a calendar on my phone. I can keep track of that. We really don't want you pulling out your phone during a class. So we're gonna have you write down those days in your weekly planner. We're gonna talk a little bit about note-taking. Some of you may be familiar with Cornell Notes from your high school experience. Um, Cornell Notes is a system where you have a ruled sheet of paper with a line slightly in the middle. Uh, what you do is you date each sheet and on the left side of the line, um, you put some clues. What's the main topic that we're talking about today? On the right-hand side, you, you get the details, the definitions. And at the bottom of the sheet, you have a space to summarize what the class was about. And tonight, when you review your notes, you can write down additional questions. Um, this, this method makes it easy for you to review for quizzes and tests, but you gotta remember that you write so that you can read it. Again, you've got the topic on the left-hand side, the detail on the right-hand side. And this is what a Cornell note sheet uh, looks like. We provide you Cornell note sheets in the classroom, so you don't have to worry about buying them. Um, it is a great idea, a great program for you to take notes to summarize those notes in your own words. We've also collected some tips from students and from graduates on how they succeeded here at COIN. Um, our attendance policy is pretty rigorous. And it's very important that you attend class every day. There's a lot of information that's given in four and a half to five hours each day, and you have to be there to get that. Come to class prepared, have your homework done, um, have, make sure that you read the, the information that's needed for the next day's class. Number three, be alert and attentive in class. It is uh, tough to come to class every day, to take care of family, and some of you are also going to work, um, but you've gotta come with the idea that to achieve my goals, 
I have to be alert and attentive in class. You need to participate in class discussions. You've got to be like the guy in the barrel. You've got to be all in. That's how you really learn a topic. Show an interest in the subject. Number five, make sure you know why we are studying that subject. Number six, ask questions. Don't ever hesitate to ask questions in the class. Um, if you want, you can spend some time with the instructors afterwards, but ask those questions. Somebody else in the class might have that same question, and it's important that you understand the information. Number seven, seek outside sources if you need information. Um, you heard our, our presentation about the Learning Resource Center. Um, it's a great place for you to, to get some um, information. Um, also taking advantage of outside help, number eight, visiting our peer tutors. When and where I back at One North State Street, we have a peer tutor, we have peer tutors for each program. They're there on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, after class so that you can just walk in and ask them questions. Set up meetings with your instructors. Again, if you've got questions, if you need to talk to your instructors, just ask them for time after class. Go that extra mile with all assignments. Just don't answer yes or no. Um, make sure you do a little research that you understand that question. Number 11, always be on time for class. Our employers that hire our students say that attendance and being on time is important. You don't want to start out your class stressed that you're running late. Take notes, take notes, take notes. Not just copying down what the instructor puts on the board or on their PowerPoints, but percolate those ideas and write them in your own words. Be responsible when you miss class. You must call the education office if you're gonna miss class. Talk to Mr. Morris or leave him a message. Also email your instructor and say, hey, what can I do to uh, get caught up so I'm not far behind tomorrow? Number 14, comment on lecture material. If something is good, make a comment. Say, I really understand that. Or if it's not crystal clear, mention that to your instructor. Get to know your instructors. The, uh, our instructors are, are wonderful people. We have tons of experience. They can share that experience with you during the class and they're good people to know. Set goals and objectives for your class. If last term you got a B minus in a class and you wanna do better this term, um, figure out how you're gonna do that, how you're gonna study more, how you're gonna um, take in more information from the class. Evaluate yourself. Ask yourself at the end of the class, how am I doing? Um, am I catching on? Is this working? If it isn't, talk to people. Come see me, come talk to your instructor. Make friends in your class. There's nothing better than having a study group, uh, coming in early, talking about uh, the material and making sure that you all understand what is going on in class, helping each other out. Have a positive attitude towards your professor and the class. Um, having that positive attitude every day is gonna help you succeed. I thank you very much for participating in this video. I wish you luck while you're at COIN, and I'll be, I'll be glad to see you when we get back to One North State Street. Take care, be safe, and be healthy. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. Um, you're watching this video because you're about to start on your online classes at COIN College. Um, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Ms. Stakely. I'm the lead instructor for a medical billing and coding program, but in this video, what we'd like you to do is to meet Dr. Natividad, who is the lead for medical assisting, and Ms. Bolton, who is the lead for pharmacy. And you will also hear from uh, Mr. Milstein, who will be teaching your first class here at COIN. Um, so again, I want to welcome you to COIN College. You will be receiving emails about how to uh, log into your classroom and also how to access your ebooks. Um, now, even though, you know, when you come back to Coin College, we, you will be issued your scrubs that you'll be wearing to class. Um, you will be wearing scrubs and uh, white shoes. Dr. Natividad will also go into that when she talks about her program, uh, about the MA program. But also when you come back to One North State, you'll be getting a locker and you can keep your things in a locker as well.
Um, I did want to emphasize that we do put a very high priority on attendance, whether we are online or actually in person at One North State. Um, classes begin at 8 a.m. and they don't end until 1 p.m. and attendance will be taken, um, not only at 8, but you know, also at 1 o'clock. Uh, we do have attendance policies also that your instructor usually goes over the, with you the first day mm -hmm. about how much time you are allowed to miss. Um, I guess with that, um, again, you'll be getting some emails. I know that, you know, how do I join my class, etc. And also Mr. Milstein will be talking to you today as well in the video. But right now, um, I think that Ms. Bolton would like to speak about the Pharmacy Check program for the Pharmacy Check students. Hi everyone, I am Ms. Bolton, the lead instructor for the Pharmacy Technician program at Coin College. I look forward to working with you and encourage you to give your all in all classes that you will be taking here at Coin College. Um, some, if you have any challenges in any courses, you can always reach out to any instructor here, um, financial aid, your um, intake at enrollment. Can we go back? I'm sorry. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Okay. Again, Ms. Bolton, I'm pharmacy technician lead instructor. As you saw, I had a little hiccup there in the recording. And as, as we all are imperfect, uh, we will make mistakes as you will make in the classroom. Again, we will make sure that we fix those mistakes or continue to work on um, doing what we need to in order to make sure that you have the full understanding of whatever is being taught in each class. We ask that you give your all and we'll be willing to do the same for you. Um, I know that some of us have not been in school for a while, so you may have some challenges that may seem that you make you feel like that you cannot get through the class or you're not doing as well as everybody else, but don't think of it that way. Again, if you give your all and ask for additional help, um, you don't have to do it maybe in class. If you don't feel comfortable, you can always ask the instructor after class or you can shoot us an email and we'll be always more willing to help, more than willing to help you get through whatever um, that hiccup is. Again, remember we're all human and we're going to give our all and if we all do that, then this is going to be a complete success. And we look forward to working with you in your future endeavors and making sure that you have everything you need to start your new careers. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Natividad. Again, I welcome you and I look forward to working with you all. Okay, so I'm uh, Dr. Maria Natividad. I'm the lead instructor for uh, medical assistance. So I have a short a very short PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to share my screen now. So uh, I want to welcome all the medical assistant uh, students, the new medical assistant students to Coin College. So this, this is my information. So my email address is mnativida.coincollege.edu and I have a phone number that's uh, only available for texting. It's 216-260-6026. So once we get back to One North State Street, uh, I will give you some welcome packet. So this is what medical assistants do. Uh, the skills of a medical assistant Coin College's medical assistant program is approximately one year long and uh, you will go through all the classes that I've shown you in the previous slide. And uh, the basic courses, uh, your admissions officer probably have given you a list of uh, the courses that you are going through, the medical assistant program. So once you're done with uh, a class, you can check off whatever you've taken in the class already. So you will know how far you went along uh, through the pro program. The employers of the medical assistants, most uh, of the employers will be hospitals, uh, outpatient care centers, other healthcare practitioners such as uh, physical uh, therapy. Uh, there are also occupational therapies, some chiropractor, chiropractic uh, 
clinics also. And uh, as you know, um, since this pandemic has begun, um, the health, career, health careers are in demand right now. Uh, the certifications and registrations that uh, you can do after you're done with your uh, medical assistant program will be certified medical assistant from the American Associ Association of Medical Assistants, registered medical assistant, which is RMA from American Medical Technologies. Uh, the one that's given uh, in school will be the registered medical assistant RMA uh, from the American Medical Technologies. I'm going to talk to you about this uh, more when we get back to One North State Street. Uh, once the medical assistant is finished with the program, medical assistants can also sit for the phlebotomy certification exam given by AMT. The accreditations that we have is ABHES Accrediting Bureau of Health Education Schools, and we have been uh, we have. We have just been accredited by ABHES in 2017. And the other one is Accrediting Commission of Career Schools and Colleges, which was renewed in 2018. So it's also five years. So uh, the requirements before going to the clinical classes, you have to submit to me a physical exam form, which will be given to you uh, once we get back to One North State Street, I'll give you the form and then the ones that are required for you is the hepatitis B antibody titer. And if you're not immune to hepatitis B antibody titer, you need the hepatitis B vaccine. And then you also will need a TB test. Uh, some clinical sites, especially when you're going on your externship uh, during winter months, then you will need the flu vaccine. Uh, like Ms. Stakely was saying earlier, for the medical assistants, uh, you are required to wear blue scrubs and white shoes. So, you know, we pay attention to uh, the uniform when we get back to One North State because uh, all these uh, medical professionals, they have their own color scrubs so if you go to the different uh, facilities. So you'll be required also to be wearing your uniforms. Uh, hair must be a natural hair color to have a professional look. False eyelashes and lo long nails are not going to be allowed in the clinical classes because they can be sources of infection. Nail polish is not allowed because if nail polish is chipped, then microorganisms can remain on the nail polish. Facial piercings are not allowed also because they are sources of infection of course being professional all the time. Um, so uh, again I'm, I welcome you to COIN College and uh, as Ms. Stakely said we are very, uh, particular also with attendance. So uh, once you get information from uh, Ms. Hansen probably or your teacher then uh, you will know the code to your class and how attendance is going to be checked. So uh, good luck and welcome again to COIN College. Uh, I give the floor to Mr. Robert Millspine now. Uh, he is going to be your first instructor. Mr. Millspine. His microphone. Mr. Millspine, your microphone. Wait, wait, all right. Thank you, Dr. Natividad uh, and Ms. Stakely and uh, Ms. Bolton. As you can see, there are a lot of different people here that are just trying to help you to be successful in your career. You've taken a first step by coming to COIN College and we thank you for making that choice. You could have chosen to go anywhere, but COIN is now your family. Whether you've been out of school for 10 years or you're a freshman uh, coming right out of high school or whether you're returning from the workforce, we're here to help you to make sure that you're success and get the career started that you want. Um, our first class, uh, the one that I'm going to teach you is part of your general education requirements. It's a grammar and writing class for allied health professionals. You'll receive uh, a letter shortly explaining the process for getting your ebook, uh, getting the materials that you need to be able to be successful in the course. Uh, whatever type of system you're using, whether it's a, a personal computer, an Android phone, an iPhone, an iPad, 
or any other possible type of, of machinery, uh, we're here to help work with you. The most important thing I want to tell you is to be patient, not only with us, but with yourself. It's an online class, and some of you may be totally uh, fine with that, and some of you may be struggling a little bit. But if you're patient and understanding, we can all work together to make you a great success. So the most important thing, though, is, as they were saying, is to be on time, 8 a.m. We start at 8 a.m., not 8.01. We start at 8 a.m. Um, if you need help, ask for it. If you have questions, ask them. The most important thing is to realize that we're all here for you and for your success. And I'm looking forward to meeting each and every one of you first uh, electronically and then back at One North State. And I'll, with that, I'll turn it back to Dr. Natividad. So, uh, Ms. Stakely. Yes. Ms. Stakely. <laughs> so again, so you've heard from the two lead instructors for your program and also your first instructor. Um, I may also be teaching you, you know, back at One North Stage, I do teach some of the core classes. Um, I teach one of them for the pharmacy techs, and I also teach some of them for the MA students as well. And again, we all want to welcome you to Coin College. We're glad you're here, and we look forward to actually seeing you at some point other than on your computer screen or phone screen. Um, so again, welcome to Coin College. Okay, so we'll see that you was okay. uh, Is that May, it? 11th, May 11th, right? We'll see you May 11th? Yep. May 11th. Okay. Yes. May 11th.